We praise you for this evening. Lord, I thank you for those that have made their way out. Father, we just ask special blessings be poured out upon them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let our God arise and the enemies of God be scattered as we truly glorify you, praise you, and bless your holy name. And Lord, I thank you and I praise you, Father God, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to lead us, teach us, and guide us tonight into all truth in Jesus' name. And we truly give praises to you. And everybody said amen and amen. Greet somebody, if you would, right or left. Praise the Lord. Tell them you love them in Jesus. Glory to God. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed hill, prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful. Twisting serving every day Just one glimpse of Him In glory will The toil is not prepared Come on, say it When we all get to heaven What a day of rejoicing that will be When we all see Jesus will sing and shout the victory Over to the prize before us Soon your beauty will be gone And soon the pearly gates will open We shall tread the streets of gold When we all get to heaven What a day of rejoicing that will be When we all see Jesus Shout Sing the last verse one more time Onward to the prize behold us Soon your beauty will be gone and behold Soon those pearly gates will open We shall tread the streets of gold Yes, when we all get to heaven What a day of rejoicing that will be When we all see Jesus will sing And shout the victory one more time When we all get to heaven Day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Yes, we will. One glad morning when this time is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial soar. Fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Oh, when the shadows of the night is born, I'll fly away. Like a bird from prison bars have flown, I'll fly away. Come on, sing it out loud. Oh, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Well, it's just a few more happy days and then I'll fly away to a land where joy so never Can run through a tooth and the poor oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I can run through a tree and the poor oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm all for, for I am free from condemnation. Lord, you are the rock of my salvation. I can 
worthy, 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 worthy. And we pour in the wall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Back and worthy, worthy. And we pour the wall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Back and worthy, worthy. And we pour the wall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For I am free from condemnation. Lord, you are the rock. Salvation. I can run through the truth and leap over a wall. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing for I am free for I am free from condemnation. Lord, you are the rock of my salvation. I can run through the truth and leap over a wall. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we shout hallelujah tonight? Hallelujah.
I don't believe there's going to be one dry eye. I believe we'll all be rejoicing in the presence of our King, especially seeing our loved ones as well. Hallelujah. But I've got a funny feeling that we'll be singing a song such as this, Hallelujah to the Lamb, Lord, I love you. And how many know love is an action word? You can say something, you love something, but I want to tell you something, actions speak way louder than what words do. I'd much rather see a sermon live than preached. Are you hearing me, child of God? Hallelujah to the Lamb. You can preach, you can, you can preach, you can preach. But if you don't live up to par, what's the use of even preaching? And somebody said, Amen. Bless the Lord forevermore. I just so believe, hear me, child of God, that there's going to be such a stirring and sweeping of God's Holy Spirit in these last days. Such a hunger being developed in the hearts and lives of God's people that they'll not settle for second best, but they want the best from God. And understand something. Only God expects the best out of us. Hallelujah to the Lamb. A lot of times we're saying, Lord, if you'll just draw near to me. And God says, I want you to draw near to me. Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. You see, we take the first step, initial step of faith, and then God does the rest. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I'm going to love Him forever. That's a song that's been, I don't know, it's, it's just engraved in my heart. And, I'm, and what, a, what, a, what a song. I'm going to love Him forever. Not only in this life, but the life to come as well. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we sing that to the Lord, Amber? Bless you, Father. Jesus, listen to the word. I love those times of song. He is great over
forever God this is a song of my heart that the Holy Spirit has placed oh God deeply engraved upon the tablets of our hearts Father to sing a love song unto you (laughs) Father I thank you I thank you for choosing us to be a child of yours That you have put the love of God within our hearts through the power of your Holy Spirit. For Lord, I don't rightly know how to love you without the presence of your Spirit in my life. But Father, tonight, look at our hearts, Father, and see the love, O God, that radiates unto you in Jesus' name. I thank you and I praise you, Master. In moments like these, I sing out a song, sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I sing out a song, sing out a love song to Jesus. singing, I love you, Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You can be seated if you like. A couple of your take your tithes and offerings this evening. Bless the Lord. And just take it up, Jeff. Precious Father. Hallelujah. You see, the Lord's more than just a song that we sing. He's more than just a a byword, but he pre- he's as precious to our hearts, hallelujah, and we love him so dearly. And, uh, you know, I couldn't think, I, I, but think of uh, one of the scriptures about, uh, well, I think it's Mary Magdalene, where many devils was cast out of her, and the love that she had for the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but she was in a deep, horrible pit. And there was no, no way out in human means, hear me, or human, human techniques to deliver her from, from
from this bondage. But only by the power of God Almighty would she be able to be delivered. And as she was delivered, I want to tell you something. She fell deeply in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I don't know about you, but I know the pit that I come out of. I wasn't born with a halo over my head. And some of the things that I used to do back in my earlier days, you know, I, I'm, I'm embarrassed to even say some things that I've done back then. But thank God that's in the past and thrown in the sea of forgetfulness. Praise God. Hallelujah. And never be remembered again. And I want to tell you something. When Christ pulls you out of a pit, hear me, child of God. Hallelujah. You've got praise in your heart unto him. You've got something to rejoice about and glorify him about in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Because, you know, you sometimes we'll look and... I've seen this before and, and uh, maybe driving through town or what have you and see a drunk staggering down the street. I remember back years ago when I lived in Delphos, there was a town drunk. I don't know, maybe they still have town drunks, uh, you know, that, but there was a town drunk and of course he, he didn't even have a house I don't think to live in, but he'd buy him a cheap uh, bottle of Mogan David wine and, and get drunk and I, I watched him one time as I sat in my car and I was watching him and, and, and I wasn't even saved at that time. And I, I watched him walk down the street and of course he was staggering back and forth, back and forth. And at that time they had parking meters. You know, you don't have that much anymore in, uh, around towns. Uh, some of them do still have parking meters, but they had parking meters there in Delphus. And I seen him hold a conversation with a parking meter for 45 minutes. It was 45 minutes he talked to that parking meter. And you know, when I look back at that, I think, you know, if it wouldn't be for the grace and the mercy of God, there go I. What would stop me from doing that very same thing? Can I tell you something? Hallelujah. There is plenty of deliverance for the Lord Jesus Christ. There's mercy and grace that he extends to mankind, but people need to want and desire deliverance in their hearts and in their lives in the name of Jesus. I'm glad I'm one of them that desired that in the name of the Lord, hallelujah. And whom the Son has set free is free indeed. And everybody said, amen and amen. When God pulled me out of that rut and mire and muck of clay, bless the Lord, hallelujah. First thing I wanted to do is give Him praise and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. One minute I was cursing His name, the next minute I was glorifying and praising His name. That's what God can do for you. Hallelujah. He pulls us out of darkness and translated, translates us into His marvelous light. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. And so much joy unspeakable and full of glory to come rolling out of your innermost being. We sing that song, it's that new, new wine, the kind that makes me smile all the time. We're not talking about the alcoholic type wine, but we're talking about the wine of God's Holy Spirit placed in our lives. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. But we thank God for placing the Holy Spirit within our hearts and in our lives to find contentment of life, joy of life, and know that life is worth living because Christ lives in me by the power of of the Holy Spirit, in the name of the Lord Jesus, hallelujah to the Lamb. But I just couldn't keep him quiet. How many know what we're talking about? When Christ come into my heart, I was a brand new person. I couldn't keep him quiet. I had to tell everybody about Jesus and what he did for my life. And not everybody would listen to me, but there were some that would listen to you. Hear me. And they said, oh, you know, you're just in some religious kick, and before long, you know, you'd, you'd drop off and... Like a lot of the others, you know, that proclaim Christianity, you know, they're in it for a while and then they're out of it. But you know what? I haven't been out of it since. And I thank God that he's kept me all these years in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I had some wonderful old saints say, you know, you know, uh, you're happy now, but once you're in this for quite some time, that joy will kind of dwindle out of you. Can I tell you something? It has never dwindled out of me yet to this day. Matter of fact, it's deeper in my heart. Hallelujah now than what it was when I first got saved in the name of the Lord Jesus. So don't let anybody take you out of that joy and that peace and that love that you have for the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. God wants to take us into new levels and heights of worship and praise unto Him. In the name of Jesus, I believe greater anointings coming to the house of God in our worship 
and our praise to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Everybody say double portion. One more time, double portion. We're believing for double portions, hear me, of anointings, not only on the preaching of the word, but upon the, the ministry of song and, and, and uh, uh, upon the people as well. In the name of Jesus, praise God. So I believe church services can be very exciting in Jesus' name if we so want it to be in the name of the Lord. And everybody said amen. Praise God forevermore. So we're looking forward to what God's got in store for each and every one of us in this new year in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Somebody have a testimony tonight that you just want to give the Lord some praise and thanksgiving? I, I would just like to tell the church that I went with Amy, or met Amy up there in Teresa in Holgate on uh, New Year's Eve. And what a tremendous service we had. I heard it was a good one. And I was sitting there looking at stained glass windows because that was a Lutheran or Catholic church. Uh, those full, that full gospel church attained that church for nearly nothing. I talked to the pastor later. And I was saying these people are slain in the spirit and they're filled with the Holy Ghost. And I'm thinking we're sitting there in this church that was meant for a different type of religion, but it's been turned around. And there was a lot of a lot of worship went on that night and I think I got home about 2 o'clock in the morning and after at 12 o'clock we all went up front and we just prayed through the new year and then we went down in the basement and they had so much food, a big breakfast they served and, and I ran into some old friends from way back and that just really really made it great to just to visit with them and find out that they were saved too and, uh, Glory to God We just had a wonderful time Hallelujah and they have church on Thursday night, so I told them, I said, I'll come back. And Amen. Said, Praise God. Yeah. Can't get enough of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Bless the Lord. Somebody else tonight? Bless the God. You just want to give the Lord some praise and glory, Judy? Well, I want to thank God for my salvation. I want to thank God for this church. And I have seen a big change in my husband. And what you were saying this morning about 2016, I am claiming his salvation. Yeah, He's going to be sitting Amen. right here. Amen. I have watched this man go from... He called himself a devil is what he called himself when I got with him, me knowing better. But <laughs> this guy is so humble, and, and he is so soft-hearted anymore. I mean, he cries all the time over, <laughs> over you know, a person hurting or, or, you know, their finances. And he'll do anything he can, and, he, and this ain't the man I met, you know what I mean? And I just thank God what God's doing. He don't drink anymore. No Ooh, friends that used to come around. God just removed every one of them. And I just thank God for what he's doing. But the, And, you know, just, just on New Year's Eve, we sat at home, you know, and, and I said, you know what I'm thankful for? And he's like, what? And I'm like, well, what are you thankful for? And he's like, well, I don't know. And I'm like, you should be thanking God for everything. I, I said, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that we are here, that, that we're blessed, and that we can bless other people, aren't you? And he sat there for a minute, and he goes, yeah, I am. So uh, I know God's going to give me something. I do, and too. I just thank I know God you know. for that. Praise God. I know he's going to get over his heart. Yes. And not only him, but there's a lot of other family members that's going to be giving their hearts and lives to the Lord Jesus Christ here in 2016. The sooner the better. Yes. Amen. I said the sooner the better. And look at me. Don't be surprised if they, you know, you see them walk in church or they come to church and or maybe and ask you, can I come to church, or meet you at church, or what have you. Don't be surprised because that's what the Lord's going to do in Jesus. That's what we're believing for. Yes. In the name of the Lord, hallelujah to the Lamb. God's a good God, loving God. He's a family-oriented God. He loves families. And can I tell you something? Hear me. I believe us, or you and your family, your family's household, will be saved in Jesus' name. Keep on praying. Keep on interceding. Don't give up. Somebody prayed for you. That's how you got saved. You didn't just get saved, you know, off the cuff of your, your, your sleeve. Hear me. But somebody stood in the gap and made up the hedge for you and prayed for you. Hallelujah. And somebody told you the salvation message, whether it be a preacher, whether it be, uh, you know, just a word of mouth of a Christian that is, uh, loves the Lord and witness to you. And it resonated on the inside of you. And before long, you give your heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you went out and told other people as well. And maybe they give their hearts and lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. So, um, understand that's the way that 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 Christ is is uh, injected into the hearts and lives of people is that people get all excited and go tell people about the saving grace and mercy of Jesus Christ and everybody said Amen and Amen praise the Lord Hallelujah 
he's going to get saved. We know that without a shadow of a doubt. When you see, when they see him trying to clean up their life, <laughs> it's going to happen. Bless the Lord. Even though they can't clean their lives up, but Christ can clean them up in Jesus' name. Somebody else tonight, bless the Lord. Before we get into the word, Kristen. Three years ago, I went shopping with my mom, and I just kind of, we were just talking about just random things, and just, I asked her when we were eating lunch, and I said, you know, I said, what do you want to happen this year, Mom? What do you want for 2016? And she said, oh, I want my family to be healthy, and you know, all the different types of things, and I kind of waited a little bit, and I thought, I want her to ask me what I want. I waited long enough, and she said, uh, well, what do you want for 2016? I said, oh, you know, not much, just my whole family to sit in church. You know, just Sunday mornings is all I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> she just kind of smiled and shook her head, well. <laughs> and, you know, I just thank God for the the boldness that he's instilling. Yes, I just don't care anymore. Like, I don't care what it takes. You know, I just want them Amen. to live for the Lord. And I, I want to see them live for the Lord, you know, before he comes back. And, like, I want to enjoy praying with my family, you know, and them praying right. with me. And um, so I'm just thankful for open doors and wisdom and boldness. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's nothing like sitting in church with your whole family. Right. Worship and praise in the Lord. Those that have their families in here, hear me. Praise God. You're blessed. I said, you're blessed. Bless the Lord. Some have waited for their husbands or wives to get saved and family members to come in, but, they, but the Lord has done it. Hallelujah. So you just keep praising the Lord. Hallelujah. And God's going to do it in the name of the Lord. You stay faithful. God sets the solitary in the family, the single person. Hallelujah. And, and understand that single person in that family can let off enough light of the gospel of Jesus Christ to lead them to salvation. In Jesus' name. They can't save them, but they can lead them to the one that can save them. That's Jesus. Amen? Praise God. Somebody else had their hand up over here. Honey. Um, this year, New Year's resolution, um, the Lord laid on my heart about my grandkids. Um, and to uh, protection over my grandkids. Amen. Because if we do not pray for our kids and the teachers that instill good, they instill bad. And just a simple prayer to get in my good word. Bless the Lord. Anybody else tonight? Praise God. Good. Hallelujah. Let's take our Bibles, if we would, please, and open them up to John 15, if you would. We've been speaking about the fruits of the Spirit. Everybody say, fruits of the Spirit. One more time. Now, how many know when we talk about the fruits of the Spirit, we're not talking about your spirit, but it's the Holy Spirit in you that bears forth the fruit of the Spirit. Of course, we know what the fruit is. It's love, joy, peace, long-suffering, meekness, temptness, temp long-suffering, temperance, meekness against such there is no law. Praise the Lord. That can only be produced by the Spirit of the living God living and abiding on the inside of you. Last week we left off with John fifteen seven. I believe it is. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be given unto you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As his word abides on the inside of us, the Holy Spirit will use the word to guide our actions, guide our thoughts, and bring about holy living in our hearts and in our lives. Now, let me say this. Hallelujah. Nobody can live a Christian life, and nobody can live a holy life without the Holy Spirit living on the inside of them. Because it's not you that's doing it. It's the Holy Spirit living in you, doing it for you. What is our responsibility, Pastor? Our will has got to be surrendered to his will. That's where the rub lies. A lot of times we won't surrender our will, but we'll do it our way. And how many know we do it our way and our way gets in the way? <laughs> Is that right? That makes sense? Our way gets in the way. So what we, we do 
is surrender our wills to the will of the Holy Spirit. Matter of fact, the Bible said he's our leader, he's our teacher, he's our guide, he's our comforter. Hear me. (coughs) He's the third person of the Trinity. He reveals unto us, hear me, the word of the living God because it's the Holy Spirit, listen, that inscribed these words on paper. Some would say, all men wrote that. Well, that's partial truth, but there's moved on by the Holy Spirit. And the only way that you can understand the Word of God is that the Spirit of God live and abide on the inside of you. You can't intellectually understand God's Word. Hear me. You can't theologically understand God's Word. Hear me. There's people, there's all kinds of theologians today that have no personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. They can quote the whole Bible to you, but yet don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hear me, child of God. When you have relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, instantly God places His Holy Spirit on the inside of you to cause revelation, the Word of God, to come alive into your heart and into your life. You can't rightly divide the Word of truth lest the Holy Spirit be the leader and the guider to show you what truth is in Scripture. And everybody said, Amen. I'm not talking about church uh, uh, doctrine. I'm talking about the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. You know, some things in church doctrine, it's good. But other things are traditions of the church. And uh, hear me, traditions are good as long as they're in line with the Word of God. But when they fall out of line with the Word of God, I can't follow a church tradition. And you can't follow a church tradition. You've got to go by what the Word of God declares. Why? Because the Holy Spirit has shown you what truth is. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Praise God. And another place, Paul said, will you get mad at me because I tell you the truth? I believe it was a church of, of Galatian. Hear me. Hallelujah. Sometimes the truth cuts to the quick. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. But that's good. Hear me, child of God, because what God wants to do is cut out the garbage in us and replace it with the fruit of the Holy Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But anyhow, when, if, if we abide in him and his words abide in us, hear me, we'll ask what we will and it'll be given unto us. That's a, a conditional promise. Hallelujah. We're to store his word away in our heart. How many Bibles do we have laying in our homes, hear me, here in America, and, you know, the only times that they're really picked up is when they come to church on Sunday morning. Hear me. Hallelujah. I believe we, you need to set a time to read the Word daily, to have a daily devotion with the Word of God and personal fellowship in prayer with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. That will keep you anchored and steadfast and unmovable. If the word abides inside of you, hallelujah, you'll ask what you will, and it'll be given unto you. Praise God. Which brings us up to John 15, 8. Listen to what it says, John 15, 8. Read with me. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. What if I don't bear no fruit? What if I don't bear more fruit? You know, there's four areas of fruit that Jesus talked about. No fruit, little fruit, much fruit, and more fruit. What if I don't bear no fruit? The Bible says he lops the limb off and casts it into the fire. Am I right? That's what script, we've been through this in 15, you know, all, all starting with the first verse, down through the second, third, whatever. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Herein is my Father glorified. Hallelujah. How's the Father glorified in the world? Look at me. For you and me bearing much fruit unto Him. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The only Bible that people will read is your life. Do you realize that? People will look at you and look at your life and see if you're living a holy life. Even a sinner will tell you what's right or what's wrong. They don't even know the Bible. But they'll watch your life like a hawk and wait for you to stumble or fall or what have you and say, see, I told you they're no better off than what we are. 
Well, I'm t- uh, hear me. We're not perfected. We're not perfect. We do stumble. We do fall. Hear me, child of God. But we don't stay down. We ask God to forgive us, cleanse us of our unrighteousness, and God dusts us off and gets us right back in the race. Hallelujah. I say this. Quit looking at people and look to Jesus. I said quit looking at people and look to Jesus. Hallelujah. He never fails. And he never had failed. Praise the Lord forevermore. But he wants you and I to bear much fruit. So shall he be glorified here on the face of the earth. It's a shame of what the church world is reverting to today. You can go in many congregations today and it's, it's like walking into a nightclub. Are you hearing me? They play secular music, rock music, along with Christian music. And proclaim that to be, hear me, proclaim that, that, well, we use that rock music to draw people in. Well, the Bible says to be ye separate and come out from amongst them. And touch not the unclean thing. Do you realize the Lord told Israel, he said, when I give you lands and I give you houses, hear me, make sure you drive the enemy out. Because if you don't drive the enemy out, you're going to learn their ways and before long you're going to start worshiping their idols. Can I tell you what? God warned them ahead of time and listen, what they do? They didn't do what God told them to do and they started worshiping heathenistic gods. Matter in fact, hear me, some of them, hear me, that had relationship with God, they started burning their children to Moloch. Offer him on the altars of Moloch. Uh, hear me, and, and uh, sacrificing them unto the idol of Moloch. Now you stop and think of that. Could the church world go that far? Well, I want to tell you, when you got false doc- doctrine, and the Spirit of God is not being led, but a man's doctrine is being led, and if you don't know the Scriptures, hear me, you can't combat against it. That's why it's vitally important that we know what Scripture is. Hallelujah. And as being a pastor shepherd, I better be warning the flock. I ought not to be like Jeremiah says, they're all dumb dogs and don't bark. They don't warn the flock of the living God. Hear me. Hallelujah. I believe God is raising up pastors in these last days that won't be intimidated by what man thinks or what man says, but they'll say and speak what God tells them to say and what God tells them to speak in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We need a church world to come back to Judeo principles, come back to the cross of Calvary in Jesus' name. The simplicity of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We don't need new techniques. Hear me. We don't need new gimmicks to try to get people to come into the house of God. Understand something. Jesus made it clear how to build the church. He said, if I be lifted up. He didn't say entertainment. He didn't say rock music. But he said, if I be lifted up. I'll draw all men unto me. Hear me. If entertainment is drawing them into the house of God, understand something. You better have a, a, a dog and pony show, a better one than the church down the street because you're going to leave your church and go to that one. I refuse to get on that, that roller coaster ride as pastors do to have a new gimmick Hear me, our new dog and pony show. I'll lift up the name of Jesus, hallelujah, and people that are hungry to live right before God, God will draw them into the house in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. Straight is the way and narrow is the gate, hear me, to enter in. Understand something. When somebody says you're narrow-minded, pat them on the back and say thank you for that word of encouragement. Praise God, because narrow is the way. And and few there be that go there. And broad is the way to destruction, and many go that way. Hear me, child of God. Let us be led by the Spirit of the living God, hallelujah, and not by programs, Not by man's doctrines, hear me, but let us go by what the word of the living God says in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen Amen and Amen. Can I tell you something? Yes, 
Hallelujah, I, we belong to Pentecostal Church of God. But can I tell you this? If they start leaving the doctrines, the simple basic doctrines of the principles of God Almighty, this preacher's leaving. I said this preacher's leaving. I'm not staying with it. Hear me. Hallelujah. Many are turning tail, hear me, hand over fist. And I want to tell you, hear me, a lot of them say it's not relevant. That old time message, it's not relevant for today. Oh, yes, it is. What they're saying is the cross isn't sufficient, hear me, to supply the needs of people today. Can I tell you something? There's still power in the cross of Jesus Christ and what he did 2,000 years ago on that cross in the name of the Lord. It's still got power to save the soul, to heal the sick bodies, to fill people with the Holy Ghost. There's still power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise God. Everything is surrounded by the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Thank God, hallelujah, that we allow the Holy Spirit to take charge of the, of, of the service. You know what? I wouldn't want it any other way. Because if I do it my way, I know it's going to flip-flop. But if I let the Holy Spirit do it His way, we're going to hit the mark in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God forevermore and evermore. Hallelujah to the Lamb. It's only through the power of God's Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I would allow the Holy Spirit to bear much fruit in our life. I don't know about you. I don't want a little bit of fruit. I just don't want, well, maybe some fruit. But I want much fruit. Hallelujah. Because this is what glorifies the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I want us to look at Matthew 5, if you would please. Matthew, the fifth chapter. We'll start with the 13th verse, and I we'll want us to read it together, end up with the 16th verse. 13 through 16. Let's read together, if we would. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under foot of men. That's vitally important. Listen to what it says. Read 14th verse. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Look at this. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify God. Hallelujah. Look at this. We used to sing a song, still sing it in here. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. What's Jesus talking about here? Hallelujah. He's talking about we're the salt of the world. Can I tell you something? Salt is a preservative. Am I right? It's a preservative. It flavors. I don't know about you, but look at me. I, I, I don't like food unless there be salt on it. I know the doctors don't like that. Are you hearing me? But I like salt because if you eat, you know, you're eating mashed potatoes with no salt on it. It, it just tastes like you're eating sawdust. <laughs> you're eating chicken with no salt on it. it. It just flavors it. Can I tell you this? Hallelujah. The true blood-bought church of the living God, hear me, is a preservative in this world today. If it wouldn't be for the true blood-bought church of God holding true to the convictions of God's word, judgment would be passed forth. Hear me, that goes beyond mind's measure. Hallelujah. A little bit of righteousness that there is in the world today, a little bit of light that is in the world today is holding back a whole bunch of rot and filth. But I've got some good news. One day we're going to be lifted out of here. I said, one day we're going to be lifted out of here. Hear me, child of God. It's called the rapture of the church. Hear me. This mortal must put on immortality and, will be, and death will be swallowed up. There'll be no more death. 
will be changed in the twinkling of an eye and will go to meet him in the air to be, live with him forever and evermore. Woe to those that are left behind. Because I'm telling you, hear me, there's going to be judgment passed upon the face of the earth. Such judgment has never been seen before. That's what the scripture records. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I'm not going to be here. You know why? Because I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to live his life in and through me. And allowing the fruits, hear me, to be born in my heart and in my life. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The Bible says this. You shall know them by their fruits. Anybody professing Christianity, look at me. There better be proof of that Christianity. Christian simply means Christ-likeness. We're to walk like Christ walked. Amen? And understand, nobody can walk like Christ lest the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of them. You can't do it. So that separates the professing ones that really have no relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ to the professing ones, hear me, that have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ by showing forth the fruits of the Spirit inside of them. Jesus said, a sweet spring cannot bring forth bitter water. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. If you go to an apple orchard uh, and you go there and say, man, you know what? Bless God, I come to get some apples. I come to get a bushel of apples. I love apples. And you go to the apple orchard and all they got is pears and it's supposed to be an apple tree. Can I tell you something? That's not hard to detect. You'll know them by their fruit. Folk, if there's no change, look at me, they're not Christian. Because those that are truly connected to the vine will bear forth fruits of purity and holiness and righteousness. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You and some would say, Well, you know what? I can't you can't judge people like that. I can't judge them, but the Lord God's already judged them. He said it right here in the Word. Praise God. If I'm not bearing forth fruit, look at me, I'm gonna be cut off. That's all there is to it. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And I understand that. Bless the Lord. But hear me. If I'm, if, if I'm connected to the vine, the Bible says to bear more fruit, God prunes us. He lops off all the sucker shoots on us. Hear me, some of the things that we think we, we desperately have to have, but God says they're draining of you of some good fruit that I want to produce. And he'll lop those things off. And can I tell you, hallelujah, when that being lopped off, it don't feel good. But in the end... The peaceable fruit of righteousness will be developed in our hearts and in our lives. We'll be what God has called us to be, the salt and the light of the world. Hear me. As the church goes, so goes the world. If all the church is righteous in the United States of America... Why are we seeing all this filth and rot being spewed out here in the United States? I was telling John, I think it was, that somebody had a post on Facebook back in the 1950s, and this is where we come from 1950s to 2016. Billy Graham held a crusade in the, in the 1950s in uh, Times Square. 100,000 people was there. Think of that. 100,000 people. (laughs) Today you'd be lucky to get five in that type of an atmosphere. I'm just, you know, speculating. But hear me. How we have dropped the ball of letting forth our light shine and being the salt of the world. I believe, hear me, child of God, hallelujah, we're to be salty and we're to have a light and not put it under a bushel in the name of the Lord. But let our light shine that men would see our good works and glorify our Father. Our lives reflect the Son of the living God. How many know the moon don't have light of its own? It's a reflection of the sun. 
We don't have light of our own. It's a reflection of the S-O-N that lives in me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I can't reflect any light in myself. I can't produce any light in myself. It's all got to be produced, not through good works, but through the power of God's Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Then good works evolve around us in Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But understand me, we're to reflect the S-O-N living on the inside of us. The question we ask tonight, can people see Jesus in you? Can people see Jesus in you? Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. Have you ever seen Christians throw tinter tantrums amongst people that aren't saved? And they'll say, <laughs> man, you know, he's supposed to be a Christian. Aren't they supposed to be kind of holding their temper down a little bit here? <laughs> I've been there too. That's what I said. But understand, you know what, that, that, that spoils our witness before God. Hear me. And that don't mean that God kicks us out of his army. No, we instantly, the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, when we do bad, he tells us when we do bad. You know that right off the bat. The Holy Spirit communicates with our spirit that you ought not have done that. Hallelujah. And you feel bad. And therefore you say, God, please forgive me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I ought not to say that. Just come off the top of my head. You know, I just lost it. But the Lord wants us to be honest and ask God just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And hear me, He'll do that. Praise the Lord forevermore. But can people see Jesus in you? Hallelujah. There's bumper stickers that they put on the back of cars that says, you know, you'll go up behind them and it says, Honk if you love Jesus. You go up behind them, honk the horn, beep, 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 and then you pass them, they give you the finger. <laughs> Hello? How many know they're really letting the light shine? <laughs> so think of that. Can that happen? Certainly can. Hear me, child of God. Bless the Lord. Does your life matter as being a Christian? Is your life really effective around unsaved loved ones? That, that if you do things that are not in accordance to the Word of God, can it really affect them? You better believe it can really affect them. Praise the Lord. You see, they're looking for one slip to where they can accuse. But understand me, hear me, child of God, hallelujah. We're to let our light shine that they might see our good works to glorify the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Let us live by the Spirit of God and not by our fleshly desires. Our flesh has got one place, and that's to be crucified with Christ on the cross. Hallelujah, crucified with Him. We have died with Him 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary. When He resurrected, I resurrected a brand new person to live by the, by the Spirit of the living God. He lives in me. He walks in me. I talk with him. He talks with me. Bless the Lord forevermore and evermore. And some would say, you mean tell me you really hold a conversation with the Lord? Yeah. Oh, man, you, you done flipped your wig. I don't have a wig on. Hear me. I just let my light shine. <laughs> but hear me, child of God. <laughs> a reflection. Bless God. But hear me. Hallelujah. It counts. It makes a difference the way that you operate, the way that you act. Bless God. And I say, God, set a watch on my lips that I sin not against you. Watch over my body actions that, I, that I'm crucified with Christ. Help me to realize and recognize it's not me living, but it's Christ living in me in the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord forevermore. And can I tell you something? He'll do it. I said he'll do it. Praise the Lord. It's one thing to profess Christianity. It's another thing to show Christianity. Can, G can people see Jesus in our lives in the name of the Lord? Hallelujah. Going back to verses 9 and 10. Listen to what it says. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue. Everybody say continue. 
How many know that's an ongoing process? Say it, ongoing. One more time, ongoing process. It don't happen just overnight. But he says, continue you in my love. Look at this. Now look what he says, read. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Now, some would say, is he talking about the Ten Commandments? Yes, he's talking about the Ten Commandments, but he's talking about everything he has spoken in the Word of God. Every word that Christ has spoken unto us, how we are to live our lives, hallelujah, these are commands, they're not suggestions of the Lord. Praise God. And as I said before, you can't keep the commands of God lest the Holy Spirit lives and abides on the inside of you. Hallelujah to the Lamb. He said, even as I have... Uh, even as I have kept my Father's commands and abide in His love. Hallelujah. I need to ask the question, where do you think love comes from? Where do you think love comes from? Well, some would say it comes from God, but Romans 5.5 5 says, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the one that produces agape, God type of love, in our hearts and in our lives, and that's the only type of love that God recognizes is His love. And everybody said amen and amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Only Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, as I said, he, only He can produce the love, the type of love that, that uh, needs to be born. Matter of fact, parts of the fruit of the Spirit, one of the fruit of the Spirit, number one on the list is love. Love joy, and peace. Hear me, child of God. Hallelujah. Why love at the top? Because love, hear me, holds all the others together. We're to love the Lord God with all of our heart, soul, body, and mind in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Is there a way that we can measure our love? Can I take out a ruler and say, well, bless God, you've got 32 or 36 inches of love. The other one say, oh, i got more than that. Hear me. I've got four foot of love. I've got five foot of love. Well, I've got 12 foot of love. Is there a way that we can measure love? Yes. Certainly is. There certainly is. Hallelujah. Let's look at the scripture if we would please. Hallelujah. In Luke 6, 46. Luke 6, 46. Let's read the first part right here. The first verse, 46 verse for a second here. Luke 6, 46. And why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? <laughs> I didn't say that, but the Lord said that. He's talking to people here. He's talking to people that followed him, listen, for the wrong reason. They followed him for the fishes and loaves, for the blessings. And the Lord is speaking to, uh, speaking to him and say, Why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say to you? Listen to a commentary note that I picked up here. It says, Lord, Lord reflects the cry of the fence-walking disciple whose indecision about being totally committed to Christ is placing his or her faith in jeopardy. The emphasis of the parable is the, is the one not doing is not a disciple. To know to do good and not to do it is sin. Now look what he, let's go on with this if we would please. Bless the Lord. And why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the floods arose and a stream beat vehemently upon the house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the streams did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. Understand, both houses was built but there was only one built on a solid foundation and that's the one that was doing the will of God or the word of God. Hallelujah. And understand, all the, the, both the houses looked alike. But can I tell you something? 
They wasn't alike because they wasn't built on a solid foundation. Hear me, child of God. Lest we be built on a solid foundation, which is Christ and Him crucified, look at me, our foundation is faulty and it will crumble in the storm. Understand something. Praise the Lord forevermore. If we truly love the Lord, we're going to obey what He tells us to do. We do, it's not just a suggestion or maybe, well, you know, uh, I might do this or I might do that. Uh, well, you know, it's not a might. It's not the, it's not what the way that we want it. A Burger King's uh, salvation have it our way. Nope. Uh, uh-uh. uh. It's got to be his way or no way. But because the Lord said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Bless the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. We cannot just be hearers only, but we have got to be doers of God's word. Hallelujah. This is the true child of God. Hallelujah. And his love is perfected within us as we obey the word of the living God. And everybody said, Amen. Praise the Lord. In 1 John 2, look at this if you would. I realize it's getting late. 1 John 2. But I don't know about you, but I love studying the Word of God. This is what I love doing right here. Rightly dividing the Word of Truth. 1 John 2, 3 through 6. Let's read it together. And hereby we do know that we know Him if we keep His commandments. Well, what if I don't know Him? What if I don't keep His commandments? It means I don't know Him. Because this is what God said. Hallelujah. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. Six verse, read with me. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Now that's God's word. I said that's God's word. Hallelujah. Understand me, Christianity is more than just a profession. It's an action. If we truly love the Lord, praise God, we're going to be obeying his word. Understand me. Hallelujah. Herein is the love of God perfected that we obey what he says in the name of Jesus. In James 1.22, James bears witness with this as well. Flip back to James, just a couple chapters back. James 1.22 through 25. Listen to what Brother James says. He says, but be you doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. <laughs> so, you know, if we're not doing the word, we're in deceptive. We're being deceived. If any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is likened unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner man he is or was. But look at this, 25th verse, read. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. What is the perfect law of liberty? The word of God. Hallelujah. Look what it says. And continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise God. How many know that's very simple and that's very plain? Bless the Lord. But a lot of times what you hear in much church circles is the blessings of the Lord. But can I tell you, hear me, the New Testament, three quarters of the New Testament, it tells us how we ought to order our lives and live a Christian walk. But a lot of times that's not preached in the house of God. Hear me, some would say you can do anything you want to do as being a Christian, not according to the word of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You'll know them by their fruits. Bless God. Understand me. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I want to bear forth much fruit. Not just a little fruit, no fruit, but much fruit. And it's got to come by the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. How many is thankful? How many can see fruit being born in your lives? Amen. You've seen it from the time you've got saved up to now. How many has seen fruit being born in your life? Amen. That you're different. You're different than what you used to be. Praise God. Can I tell you something? You've not been rehabilitated. Understand me. Hallelujah. But you've been born again. Amen. Your spirit is born again. Hallelujah. And instantly the Holy Spirit lives and abides on the inside of us to lead us, guide us, and direct us in all paths of righteousness in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Any questions? Bless God. Any questions tonight? Hallelujah. Well, bless God. I stir anybody up? Make you mad? The gospel either make you sad, glad, or mad, one of the two. But understand me, I'd much rather have you mad at me and get right before God than, you know, me patting you on the back and say, just do the best you can, forget about it, don't worry about it, and you split hell wide open. I'll be held accountable for the blood. Hear me, upon your head. Thank God, hear me, that it's the Word of God and those been doers of the Word that are the true child of God and the true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jeff. I, you know, uh, this is a little bit of a testimony, but, you know, I thank God that we have Bible study. This is the only way we grow. Exactly. As a family, as a church, the Word in us, you know, we talked about going to new levels of faith, mm -hmm. new levels of advancing that and, and having a vision in this church. And we all got to do that together. Yeah. Even though our walk is, is individual, our congregation is a family. Yeah, in order for us to grow, is we, can, we each and every one of us need to continue to invest our lives into the Word, so the Word in return is an investment back into the world. Amen. And uh, so that's why I said it, it, the study is great. I mean, when we talk about the Holy Spirit. He's the one that leads the guide. It's a ne it's a study that never dries up. Amen. Praise God. I agree a hundred percent. Can I tell you this? Sunday morning's not a it, 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 Sunday morning doesn't cause you to grow. Sunday night, Wednesday night causes you to grow right here. Reading the Word of God and understanding the Word of God. I want to understand why I'm blessed. I want to know. I don't know about you, but I ask questions. I ask questions in the Bible, and the Bible shows you and answers the questions. I want to know what causes this thing to work. It's kind of like a car, a mechanism on a car, a car engine. You know, you get a mechanic, they want to know how that thing operates. And they know every part on that car. They can tear that motor down and put it back together again. I want to know everything about the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the left. I want to know His, His, His goodness. I want to know His mercy. I want to know about growing in grace and love and faith and kindness. I want to know these things and how to do those things in the name of the Lord Jesus. Not just speak about it, but how do I do it, Pastor? Well, praise God. That's what it rightly dividing the word of truth does in Jesus' name. Praise God forevermore. But I'm not trying to belittle the Sunday morning service. It's one of the highlights of the services that we have. But hear me. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is where you get anchored, steadfast, and secure in your walk and relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the area where you can ask questions. I mean, we can't stop a Sunday morning service, raise your hand up and say, Hey, Pastor, um, what's this, that, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And then it just it, it dampens the flow of the Spirit of God. Hear me. But Wednesday nights, Sunday nights, bless God, this is what it's for. You learn by asking questions. We learn together by rightly dividing the word of truth in Jesus' name. I'm thankful for Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. Bless the Lord. I do have a question, Pastor. I have a lot of people that I know that think because they go to church Sunday morning and they want to argue with me. But my thing, I don't like arguing with people. I right. won't argue with people. Because my, my thing is, God is of love, and, and if I argue with them, I'm just going to push them away. Right. So how would you, let, like, my, my nephew's um, girlfriend's on there going to baptize their baby. She, she's on there last time on Facebook talking about it. And I wanted to, to get in there because her grandma came on there and said, Roman Catholic's the only way, and that's it, you know. Christian ain't it. And, and I wanted to get in there, but I always back up. You know what I mean? I'm like... No, that's not being Christian. That's not being nice. That's not. 
I don't want the fight, the arguing. Right. But but I know I know a lot. Just like whenever I went home, Dan was working on the race car, and and one of the guys came over and he's like, "Yeah, my wife and son went to church this morning." Well, that's funny. Just on New Year's Eve, you guys were drinking and having a big party. <laughs> mm -hmm. How how would I go about this? You know, I don't want to say I'm better or my church is better, but I don't want to fight with them at the same time because they'll say, "Judy, why don't you drink anymore?" You know, we we go to church and drink, and I said. Because the Bible says all drunkards will enter the gates of hell. Well, that's just because your church. I said, no, that's because of the Bible. Well, our Bible don't say that. So there's my argument. What what would you do if you were put in my position? Because I, I, I'm i put in this position all the time with people. And I'm like, God help me then. Because I won't argue with them. And I won't fight with them. And sometimes I just be quiet and I walk away like, okay. <laughs> you know. Now one thing we always got to remember. We're not out to win an argument. We're out to win souls in the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Jesus had that problem with a woman at the well. She said this. He said, you know, you Jews say you've got to worship in Jerusalem. And we Gentiles say we've got to worship here at Mount Grism. And Jesus said, woman, I tell you the truth. Hallelujah. The true worshipers will worship me in spirit and in truth. Bless the Lord forevermore. So hear me. Uh, bless God. If they're going to ask your opinion... I give them my opinion, what I think, and I said, this is what God's word declares, and I do it out of love. I mean, you don't do it in a sarcastic way, because I've had people come up to me and said, you know, um, I need to get my, my babies water baptized. And I said, well, I'm sorry, but I just don't, wa I don't water baptize children. And they said, really? And I said, no, I don't water baptize. Well, how come you don't water baptize children? I said, because it's not commanded in the word of God. I said, if you can show me it's in the word of God, I'll do it. And I'm not talking about extra books that people put in the Bible, but I'm saying, you show me in the Word where, where Jesus baptized infants or where the disciples baptized infants. You'll find it no place in Scripture, but you'll see where they was dedicated to the Lord at a young age. So we believe in dedication, but we will not baptize any infant. Are you hearing me? Because understand me, water baptism isn't going to get you to heaven anyhow. It's through the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, we're to be water baptized. That's, that's commanded of the Lord Jesus. But understand, hallelujah, my faith is not in my water baptism. My faith is in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And an infant is pure. They don't have an understanding of what is right and what is wrong. If they die, they'll go right straight into the presence of God Almighty. Bless the Lord. So don't argue with them. But if they ask of you, you know, what, 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 what do you think? What do you, what's your belief? Well, this is the way that the Word of God declares. And just give them what God's Word says. And, you know, if they want to argue with the Word, that's up to them. Right. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But, I, you know, I've been in, in, in those positions before. Praise God. And, and as I said, I wasn't out to argue with them. I wasn't out to, to uh, win an argument. I'm out to win a soul for the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and uh, you know... Some of our Catholic people, we got, I don't know, there have been there's bunches of Catholics in, sitting in this congregation that got saved. So we thank God for that. And one of them sitting right back there, that's my wife. She was raised a Catholic. Phil was raised Catholic. And Joe was raised Catholic. And, and huh? Fred, was you raised Catholic, Fred? I didn't know. He got in trouble all the time. <laughs> Can I say something? Go ahead, Jeff. You know, we've all been surrounded with people just like that, that, you know, they, they come to know the Lord, you know. And sometimes it takes a while, sometimes it takes the Holy Spirit a while to sanctify drinking out of them or some other thing maybe that's a little bit of a hindrance to them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we always want to fix them right away. And it's not really our job. Our job is to pray for them, you know, and let the Holy Spirit do the work. Right. You know, I, I have a lot of people that I consider that I think are Christians, and, and uh, they're all right with drinking wine. Well, I'm not. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the Lord's put me at a level where he, he doesn't want me to do that. But for them at this time, and I'm not, I'm not saying it's all right. I'm just saying it's the Holy Spirit's job to take that away from them, not Jeff's or Judy's. Right. You know, and in his timing... That's when it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Exactly. When they, they ask you, but when they ask you, though, you say, hey, yep. the Lord's taken me to a different level. No more will I allow that to be part of my life. Amen. Praise God. Yep, that's, that's I agree 100%.
some things you've got to, especially in young Christians, you've got to, you've got to watch yourself because you can literally be a stumbling block to some, some Christians. But it needs to be taught in the house of God and allow the Holy Spirit to do his work. Praise the Lord forevermore. And if it's not taught in the house of God and if it's not taught that, it, you know, that it's wrong, how are they going to know? Not going to know. Praise the Lord. So we, we just, uh, we're very patient when it comes to young converts, but if we've been born again for 10, 15, 20 years, we ought to be seasoned Christians, hear me, and uh, know what's right and what's wrong in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Vitally important in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, anybody, the scripture says that, you know, if we're truly saved, we'll flee the very appearance of evil. We'll flee it. Bless the Lord. We don't want nothing, nothing to do with it. Hallelujah. If the Spirit of God's living on the inside of us. Praise the Lord. I, I don't know about you, but I get my contentment out of the Lord Jesus. My fulfillment, my desires. I, I, many of you know, I've been, you've been in the world. I've been in the world. I've been down the drunken messes and the parties, and I've been uh, here and there. I've been a sailor and went through a sailor as a drunken sailor. Um, hear me. I've been there. I've done that. I've done the drugs. I've done it. And can I tell you something? There is no contentment in none of that. It might seem fine at the time, but when Christ comes into the life, oh, praise God, this is what I've been looking for all my life. And I was trying to fill it with that, with drugs, with sex, with uh, uh, beer and partying and this and that and the other. Hallelujah. But now Christ has come into my life. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He causes me to lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. Surely goodness and mercy follows me all the days of my life. I am content in the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But I realize that you want people, you know, you, you just want them to get saved. You want it so bad, and you, you know, sometimes you can grab them by the earlobes and pull them down to the altar. But you can't do that. You can't do that. You've got to allow the Holy Spirit to work His work. That's what He come into the world to, for, to convict the world of sin. Hear me. Praise God. And I pray to God that churches have a preacher that will preach against sin in the name of Jesus. If not, you're sitting under false teaching. Praise God forevermore. We'll just leave it at that. Bless the Lord. Hope to see you back Wednesday night in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Stand your feet with me if you would, please. Bless the Lord. I'm going to ask my wife to close us in prayer. Holy Spirit, you're our leader, our teacher, and our God. And I pray, Lord, when we come in to, to talk to people that ask us why we don't do something, personal testimony is yes. the most important thing, Lord, we can share. Well, that's what I used to do, but I don't need that anymore. You are the fulfillment. You are our joy. You are our peace. Yes. You are everything we need, Lord God. May we show them how to rise above in Jesus' name. And Lord, the word says we know how much we love you is how much we love others. So we need to reach others by the love of God. And we thank you, God, for your word tonight. May it be a rock that, just another rock that makes our foundation stronger. In Jesus' name.